What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. As you can see in front of me, I have a big pile of redwood, which you know what that means, outdoor project. It's late spring and we have a couple big wisteria bushes and I wanna build an arbor so they have somewhere to grow up and over. And I also want them to look nice, so I just wanted to go with natural redwood. Let's head outside and I'll show you what we're gonna to do today. All right, so we're out in the yard. These are the two wisteria bushes that I need to address because they're a vining plant or bush, whatever you want to call it. So they need somewhere to go. So basically, we're just going to put the arbor right here in the middle, and then they'll be able to grow up the sides and over the top and hang down and look all nice and all that stuff. So I got redwood, like I said before, to do this with. You can use cedar or even just regular cheaper wood because redwood is pretty expensive. Uh, I know everybody's going to want to know how much. I actually spent about $300 just on the materials which is it's whatever you know i mean it's gonna look cool right when it's done and i wanted a natural wood look against the dark house so that's what i went with but you can do it with like fur or whatever and just paint it with exterior paint but anyway enough talking let's get to the project we're back out in the shop i actually was gonna film this outside but it's really windy so that's no good for audio and we could have got away with some simple tools like a circular saw and a speed square which you can definitely use on this project but since we're going to be doing it in the shop i'm going to use my miter saw because it's easier. So we'll assemble it in the shop and then take it outside and install it. I do have some plans here and I did design it in SketchUp so I'll overlay that right here so you guys can kind of get a better idea of what we're going to be building. But I got my cut list and I do feel kind of lazy to be honest with you because I ran across these one and a half by one and a half pieces that are already cut out of bevel and they're actually the right length to go across the top. So I got a bunch of these and these will also be used for the staggered pieces on the sides, lattice, I guess you would call it sort of for the vines to grow up and over. So all I gotta do is cut those to length, cut the legs to length, and then cut the stretchers that go across the top and then we can get to assembling this thing. All right, I'm gonna start off cutting the staggered side pieces. I need 16 of them at 19 and three quarter. So I'm just gonna start by cutting off the bevel. So get a square edge and then cut 19 and three quarter and do that, you know, 16 times. Yay. Got the 16 pieces cut for the staggered slats on the side. Now I'm gonna do the bottom and the top, which are 32 inches, so I need four of those. Well, in here I'll cut the two pieces that run vertically in the center on the sides, which are 71 inches each. Now we can move on to the legs, which is gonna be made out of these two by fours. And they're gonna be seven foot, and there's gonna be four of them, obviously. Someday I'm gonna build a miter station so I don't have wood just hanging off in the abyss, you know? Comment down below if that's something you guys want me to make a video on, and I will do so. Get these marked and cut. I also realized I haven't been wearing safety glasses this whole time, so I'm gonna go ahead and put those on now. Just pretend that I was wearing them the whole time, and then you also do that too. That's gonna do it for all the straight cuts, but now I need to cut these four into the stretchers, and I'm gonna put a 45 degree bevel on each side of those. So I'll set the solid 45, and we'll get those cut. Start by beveling one end and then measure from there to the other end on the long side will be 82 inches. So I also need some bracing in the corners. Might not need it, but I'm gonna put it there anyway. And the scraps from the staggered pieces on the side actually will work perfect for that. They're gonna be 14 inches from outside bevel to bevel. 
So I'll get four of those cut on the saw as well. Before we start assembling, real quick, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, which is the Home Depot. They brought me on as part of the prospective program this year, and I couldn't be more excited to be working with them. As part of that, they send you out tools every quarter to try out and see how you like them, use them in your builds, and just kind of give feedback on how you like them. Well, I'm gonna give you guys feedback right now, because they sent out the Link Ryobi Toolbox System. And I'm stoked for this because you know how you get those five, seven, eight piece toolkits and they just end up laying all over the shop or they're in the, all those bags just everywhere? Well, that's what I'm gonna utilize this for, is put all my cordless tools in there, I can stow it away in the corner or take it with me wherever, and all the toolboxes come apart and lock together and it's on wheels, so it's mobile. It's gonna be really great for that. And they also sent me the 40 volt shop vac, cordless. Yeah, cordless shop vac. I was skeptical too but it is actually pretty nice. I've used it to vacuum out my boat several times. Depending on which battery you get, the, the run time's pretty good. I think it's like 30 to 45 minutes. Don't quote me on that, something like that. I've used it for 30 minutes on high and it didn't run out. So I've been using it for that, my car, truck, around the shop, as you'll see here. And it's pretty awesome. So if you guys wanna check that out or anything else you see in the video, I will link it down in the description below. I appreciate you guys. And thanks Home Depot for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the build. All right, now I can start assembling. What I got here is all the stuff for one side. So I'm gonna put one whole side together and then do the other whole side and then the top as one and then assemble all of it, stand it up. Probably do that outside because I don't really have enough room in here, but we'll see. So a couple things I'm definitely gonna do, especially with redwood or any softwood is pre-drill. And I'm gonna use this bit right here. It has a countersink actually built on. So it'll drill down and countersink at the same time. And then also the screws I'm using are exterior grade. You wanna make sure of that as well. So get this stuff laid out and I'll start putting it together. So these are the staggered slats. These are the top and bottom. And this is the vertical piece. These will be the legs. Hmm, pitch, great, love that. These laid out, these are gonna be 26 inches apart. Check on both ends to make sure they're good. And this bottom piece, nine and a half inches up and should stick out three inches on each side. Just gonna get the top and bottom put together so that way the boards don't do this while I'm trying to do the rest. I'm not gonna countersink it too deep, just enough to make the screw flush well, a little below the surface. Okay, now we got it to where it's not gonna bow and I can put the center one in and then do all the staggered pieces. And we'll put these six inches apart from here to here, six from here to the next, etc. And also three inches off the end. You really wanna make sure to get this first one right because when you measure off that one, then everything else is gonna be exaggerated if you're off a little bit, the further up you go. All right, got one side all done. Oh, is this good? You guys think it should be what, like this or like, like that? <laughs> well, I guess we need to fix that. Should have put two screws in each side on those top and bottom slats at minimum to keep it from racking. So we're gonna do that. It's gonna look weird, but get it squared back up on the table. And they can put another couple screws in it and then we'll be good. 
What can I say? I'm not a designer. I just put stuff together, mostly. I think I'm gonna put a couple more in the center one too. That should help also. On the other side, I'll make it look a little better because I'll, you know, plan ahead. Who does that? That's no fun. I just like to do stuff on the fly. Makes it interesting. Okay. Should stand up straight now, ish. There we go. It's a little wobbly, but it's much better than it was. All right, I got the other side assembled off camera. So now what I'm gonna do is assemble the top and then we can put it all together. What I gotta remember is the legs are gonna go up between the two boards on the outside. So I'm actually gonna use one of the pieces I cut off of the, uh, actually these boards, but they're the same width for spacers. So I know they're exactly the right width apart from each other when I put the slats across the top. I'm just gonna leave those in there while I assemble it. Okay, clamped them together. So that way when I move one end and the other end, they don't do weird stuff because I was having a real hard time trying to get it to be where I need it to be. Trying to juggle four boards around. For the pieces that go across the top, instead of starting at one end and just measuring every six inches, I'm gonna start in the middle, find the center, and then start from the middle and go outward. So that way, if I'm off just a little bit, it's not gonna get really exaggerated as I go from one end to the other. Hopefully that'll help keep everything consistent. Now the top shouldn't rack because I'm putting two screws across, you know, hopefully. We'll see. I don't know. So now that I have my base, I'm just going to start measuring out six inches from there and putting slats until I get, uh, I think, six inches to the end. I'll have to look, but something like that. So we'll get to doing that now. Oftentimes when I make videos, I'm wondering if you guys are sitting there watching, being like, this guy knows what he's doing, when really behind the scenes, it's just me trying to figure it out as I go, and this time's no different. So I've been sitting here thinking, wondering like, how am I going to get the legs up into the top and screw them in and put the braces on and keep everything, you know, symmetrical? But I think what I'm going to do actually is take it, flip it over upside down and put it on the floor and then flip the legs upside down, put them in, square them up, and uh, attach them that way. We'll see if it works. Clean this stuff up first. I don't care how big your shop is, you'll never have enough room. Especially when you just start throwing stuff everywhere, tripping over it like I do all the time. Story time, when I worked at Bidwell Wood Company, building a lot of stuff for them, I had a 15,000 square foot warehouse. Guess what? We still ran into each other all the time. Oh, there was only four of us working in there. But somehow, we're always in each other's way. It just happens. Let's see if we can flip this thing over without destroying it. Unlikely. These sharp edges, I don't wanna ding those up. Luckily it's not oak or something that's real heavy. Ow. See, not enough room, never. I am gonna be attaching the legs with these four inch lag bolt style screws. So I'll put, uh, I don't know, a couple in each one, maybe four, who knows? We'll see. Weird, there's stuff in the way, that never happens. All right, three and a half inches in from this bottom miter. Go in your home. It's so close, just, ow, beating me up. Mallet, it's done, basically. Send it out. There it is. 
Seems more better. Squared up. Hmm. What should I do? Two? Four? Twelve? I think two's fine. I'm just gonna diagonal them, and then I'll have the brace here and here. That'll be plenty good, I think. Pretty impressed. Okay, one side. Shh, it's being loud. Squeeze in here, you know, tons of room. Make sure we're still square, pretty square. Next. Well, look at that. Would you look at that? Just look at it. Look right at it. Need my square. Okay, this side, nailed it. Leaving this over here so it can fall again. You know, that's right. Okay, I think while it's here, I'm gonna put the braces in too. Put this under here so this can just sit flush on that. I'll line it up with the inside so that'll make the angle up here flush with the top. And then I switch back to my countersink bit and I'll just drill a hole at an angle. Like that. And then I'll just attach from the inside in a couple spots. That should be plenty strong. And just do the same thing on all four corners and then we should be able to take it outside and get some finish put on this thing. See how it's really gonna look. Ow, come on. Hmm. Assistance would be helpful at this point, but working by yourself, you gotta come up with stuff, you know? Furniture dolly. Always keep two or 10 of those around. Come on out. Just don't ruin it on the way. Cord, come on. Oh no. Okay. Come on out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, get another furniture doll and I could just start finishing it right there. Come on, it's working out good. All right, it should be really fun to finish with spray in the wind. You know what, I'm gonna have to push this back in because there's no way I can spray finish out here. Come on, why? Just turn Harbor Freight tool this way. Why? Just cooperate. That's not cooperating. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna finish it right there. <laughs> so the finish I'm gonna be using is the spar urethane. It's rated for outdoor use. I use this on all my outdoor stuff. Usually it's a uh, brush on, but they didn't have any. So we're gonna be using spray. And uh, it's kind of better to do once it's all together anyway, because you can get in all the tight spots. So put a couple coats of this on and then we can get it installed. I just realized once I flip it over, <laughs> have to get on a ladder or something to uh, do the top. I could probably put on sawhorses. We'll see. Okay, hopefully the wind's not too bad for you guys. I made it just a little too tall, so it's hard for me to move. This is ridiculous. Okay. It's still wet, if you're curious. I've got one coat on there, but it's just too windy, so. I'm gonna come back later and put more on. Of course, this ground is not level, not even close. Get my little brackets. I rented a hammer drill and it can uh, attach it to the concrete. Looks pretty good. Okay, so I got these little brackets. 
So I'm just going to put an anchor in there and an anchor in there on all four corners and should be fine. We're in this hammer drill. This is an actual hammer drill, not a drill with a hammer setting, not to be confused because they don't work. That's me how I know. So much better. Okay. Apologize for the real bright picture. I can't find my lens filter, which is unfortunate because they're not cheap. We just need to train these to grow up this, which shouldn't take very much. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm probably going to take them back off and put another coat of finish on anyway. So I actually came back off camera and put four more brackets just to make it a little bit more sturdy. And it's pretty good. As long as people don't try to do pull-ups on it, I think we'll be all right. It's just to hold a plant, you know? If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments down below. Like the video, share it if you'd like. I appreciate it. Again, thanks to Home Depot for sponsoring this video. We'll see you guys on the next one.